Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. And today let's talk about how you can become a full stack developer, specifically a full stack web developer. Now I'm making this video because I have been asked this question a lot of times by my friends, by a lot of relatives and people who are just getting into web dev or programming. They ask me, how do you become this? How do you become a developer? And I was like, go on YouTube and learn. But there is always a detailed answer to this. And that is why I'm making this video. For any one of you who is about to start programming or about to get into development or is just willing to know more about it, you're most welcome. So I divided this video into three phases. Phase one is programming, phase two is front end and phase three is back end in which I'm going to talk about each phase separately that's how i got into web dev and that's how i became a developer first and foremost i will highly recommend you to get a book and a pen and just write down all of this whatever you observe whatever you think is really important for you so let's get started with phase one programming now a developer usually does programming or you also might have heard it as coding but programming is a better term because you program stuff right you don't only write code you also think so as i said programming is about thinking and then writing code so how do you do it well the first thing is you need to learn a programming language you might have had this in your school in your college or you might have seen it in someone else's computer that they are writing code on a black screen with a lot of color word, colorful words that is a programming language you give instructions to the computer which then compiles that to byte code which is zeros and ones binary and the computer understands it now before even programming you need to understand how a computer works how software works how do you download and install software i know a lot of people don't know about this so first off get a laptop if you don't have a laptop just buy one even if, even if it's cheap it doesn't matter for basic programming you don't need a supercomputer all you need is a simple laptop even if it is cheap with even the lowest of specifications step one is to get a laptop write this down now you should know the basics of at least one programming language HTML and CSS don't count as programming languages. They are markup and styling languages. By programming languages, I mean the languages that contain variables, functions, classes, loops, etc. All of this is the basic or fundamental, or you can call it the foundation of development. Now, which programming language should you learn? If you are someone who has a lot of free time and is willing to give that time to actual work, learn C because C of course is hard and it also takes time but later on you will realize how much it is going to help you in actual development because once you go through a hard language everything else is going to be easy for you so learn C if you have got time the second situation is if you are a student or you work in some other job and you don't have a lot of time in that case if you're a student you might have a program language in your curriculum in your course go learn that to give some examples, you have Java, C Sharp, or PHP, or Python, or JavaScript. It doesn't matter. Whatever you learn as your first program language, it's going to help you in the next one. Also, when you're learning from your curriculum, it's going to help you in the school syllabus as well as in real world. But don't rely on the syllabus. Don't learn from the school books. Instead, learn from the internet or some other books that are specifically on that programming language. So choose a programming language in your curriculum or one of the common ones. If you don't have time, go learn Python or JavaScript or Ruby. Learn about that from external sources, not from your curriculum. The curriculum just pick the name of the language that you want to learn. Also, if you're looking for jobs, C Sharp is the leading language when it comes to the job market. So you can choose C Sharp or there is also JavaScript, which we are to talk about in phase two. Now, the third scenario is that you're not a student and you don't have a lot of time as well. In that case, I'll suggest you to jump to phase two, that is in simple words, learn HTML and CSS. Now these all major programming languages, be it Python, JavaScript, C Sharp, Ruby, Java, etc., etc., all these languages have different syntax, but the same fundamentals. The fundamentals I mentioned before, 
variables, loops, and all of that is almost the same in all languages. So when you go from one language to another, it's not going to be difficult for you at all. You're going to learn the same exact thing, but it will be written in a different format. So don't get scared when you want to jump from one language to another, when you're done learning one language and you are going to another one. Now the top resource to learn a programming language, in my opinion, is on YouTube. If you search bro code, you're going to find his tutorials on almost all programming languages. So I'll highly recommend checking out bro code on YouTube. Also, once you learn the fundamentals, you also have to practice them. And for practice, I'll recommend go to codewars.com and solve these challenges. They're also known as katas. So you can solve these challenges on Code Wars. And of course, you have a reward system on these websites, but this will benefit you. And if you do it in a group, it's going to benefit more people. So if you have a group of nerds who want to learn programming language, go solve challenge with them and show off as much as you can. Now jumping to phase two, which is front end. Once you are familiar with the core concept of a programming language, now your brain has done enough work and now you can jump on to front end, which is building user interfaces or websites. Now there is also a front end for mobile apps, which is you learn Flutter or XML. You can do that also. But in this video, I am going to talk about only the web front end, which is HTML, CSS and JavaScript. To summarize, HTML and CSS are more of how a web page looks like and JavaScript is more like how a website behaves. When you click on something, when you hover on something, when you interact with something on the web page, that is JavaScript. Now, when you enter the land of front end, it can be scary at times because front end is not as small as learning a programming language. There are a lot of things, there are a lot of options. You don't have to do all of them, but there are a lot of options that you will see on the internet learn react learn view learn angular learn blazor just to name a few these are frameworks or libraries you don't have to focus on them as of now all you need to do is learn plain html css and javascript and build web apps or websites with those now of course you can learn this on youtube but i'll recommend a better platform for this which is scrimba quick disclaimer this video is sponsored by scrimba but I have been a Scrimba user for the last three years and I learned a lot from Scrimba, specifically React from Bob Zirol's course. Now they recently launched the V2 with a very new UI and a new system. The reason Scrimba is so effective is because they don't only have videos. You don't only watch videos and do that, but instead you can get inside of a video, which is the most unique way to learn. The best part about Scrimba is that the way they teach is not that they just teach you something and then get away with it. They will teach you something and that they will give you a challenge to complete. And you can do that right in that video itself. While you learn, the instructor will present to you a challenge after teaching a topic. And then you can go ahead and do that challenge on your own. And then you can also view the solution. But the challenge itself is going to increase your confidence in what you just learned. And you also get to show off your skills. And that's why I recommend it because it's pure practical learning. Because the version 2 is still in beta, if you find any bug, just click the report a bug button and let them know what does not work for you. They offer a bunch of courses that you can go through learning HTML, CSS, learning JavaScript. The best part is that they are free. You can learn HTML, CSS and you can learn JavaScript. And if you like their courses, you can continue with the pro plan, which will give you access to the front end developer career path, which includes all things front end with projects as well. You can click the link in the description to get a 20% off discount on the pro plan and you get access to all pro courses. That's what I recommend for learning front end, which is Scrimba. Now, once you're done with your HTML, CSS and JS, now you can jump to something like React or Vue or Svelte or Angular or any other framework or library out there. Now, these are basically front end libraries or front end frameworks. Now, they can be a little weird at times because you are jumping from plain HTML, CSS, JS to a full framework. And so the way they work is going to be different but they allow you to make web apps in a more organized and simpler way. So try out all the frameworks and choose one which works for you. It doesn't matter which one you choose. I personally enjoy React more, but you can go with Svelte or Vue. Now, all of this is going to take time. It's not going to take seven days or just a month. It's going to take three months or six months based on what your learning capability is, how fast you learn or how fast, how much time you give it. But I can say that in phase one, it might take you a month or two when you are learning a programming language. In phase two, it might take around three months to finish the entire phase two, but you're going to enjoy it 
because you're going to have projects that you build and see visually and also that's easy to show off phase three might be different phase three is usually a small thing there is not a lot to learn because once you get to phase three you've already learned a lot from phase one and two that learning phase three becomes easier and faster one more thing i'd like to include in phase two is git git is not a programming language it is a version control system now again git is something new and it might take a little bit of time but you can go along with front end and git so you can use both simultaneously you can learn git along with building projects on the front end the resource for git i always recommend is git for dummies tutorial by nick white on youtube i'll leave a link in the description below that will give you a basic overview of how git works what git is and other than that for git there are many courses on youtube this was a simple crash course but essentially you will learn it easily by building more projects and then integrating git with them and then github is simply git on the cloud so they are not the same github is git on the cloud where you use git on the cloud you upload your code or you push your code on the cloud now comes phase three backend now in my opinion backend is very easy and straightforward it might look a little bit difficult in the beginning but quite frankly it's very easy at least the beginning of it is very easy so first step in backend is to pick a language of your choice you have already learned many or one programming language you choose any one of them whichever you like for example javascript now you understand http and rest apis how http works how the communication between a front end and a back end works this is a little bit of theory but honestly it's very straightforward once you get a grasp of it so you pick a language you learn how to build rest apis which is how the front end and back end will communicate with each other you understand the http methods such as get post put delete etc then you go on to work with databases you can learn sql which is structured query language again very easy to start with at least because it's just plain english thrown out to you you can learn any relational database such as mysql postgres or sql server then you can integrate that database inside of your rest apis so let's say you build a project on the front end which is front end only and then you build a back end and then you integrate both of them with a database you can also go about learning no sql which is where you don't have tables but you have something like a list of dictionaries or an array of objects for example mongodb mongodb is the most popular example of no sql so you can learn that also while you work with databases you should also understand how you should design your database schema at first it's fine to just randomly name anything but then later when you are building a project you should understand what to name your tables what to name your columns and all that stuff then you learn a back-end framework so for example in node.js there is express which is most popular you have nest.js so you learn that and you build rest apis quite easier than you would normally do in a plain node.js using http i'm taking node.js as an example you can choose any language of your choice here then you learn authentication and authorization this is when a user signs up and a user logs in here you can learn about json web tokens jwt and how you can do OAuth with Google, and you can do audio, and you can also learn about session management. Now, authentication can be a little bit tricky to understand because of how it works, but eventually you are going to be comfortable with it. Just like you struggled with learning a programming language at first, this is something new that you have to understand a lot more than coding because the coding part is very simple but you should be able to understand how authentication actually works and then later down the line you're also going to learn about microservices and you can learn about graphql and how all of that is more part of the back end but the basic thing is a rest api a database user authentication that is the fundamental of back end that's how you build a back end but then when it comes to deploying a back end it's not as simple as deploying an HTML file or your front end. Deploying a back end is more of renting a server on the cloud and then putting your back end on there and then starting it on the server on the VPS itself. In simple terms, how you can access the VPS, how you can push your code there, how you can start it, then enabling SSL and TLS, connecting a domain, all of that you do manually. Now that was a simple overview of how you can become 
a full stack web developer just keep in mind that this video is not perfect this might not be the exact route you go you might learn back and first because if that interests you and you can learn front end at the end because it is the least interesting to you i laid out the process of how it usually works for most people out there which is programming front end and back end and here are some important points to keep in mind except that there is no perfect way to do this you try a bunch of things and you pick one whatever suits you the second is it's going to take time third is you will make mistakes because making mistakes is what we do every day the next thing is stick to one tech at a time if you want to learn php if you are interested in that and if you're learning laravel in php stick to that there is no point in switching the technology while you're learning so when you're learning one thing when it interests you stick to that the next thing is be a programmer not a frameworker don't be a slave to a framework if you're good with one framework and let's say there is suddenly a requirement work in some other framework in that case it should be easy for you to switch your framework for a certain time because almost all frameworks work the same way they have the same concepts so your focus should not be being a react developer or a view developer your focus should be on being a good developer so when it comes to switching the frameworks for some time learn the other framework because because you don't learn everything in only one framework when you learn three frameworks you gain some knowledge from the other two as well but you choose one and then stick with that as much as you can next thing i'll say is think more than writing code as i said before programming is more of thinking than writing you don't just randomly write code you think what you are about to write and then it just comes out automatically once you have practiced it so think more what you're writing and once you get stuck on a bug take your hands off the keyboard and just think what went wrong look at your code read your code and then once you stay calm you can find the bug easily the next thing is build more projects as much as you can because building real world projects or even simple projects will give you a lot of knowledge that you won't just understand from courses courses are good but building projects is far superior because then you go to documentation you go to stack overflow you learn from a lot more instead of just following a course so build projects even with your ideas as much as you can lastly be consistent if you're learning to code learn regularly be it half an hour or just an hour whatever time you give it give it every day don't skip a day because when you skip a day now you have two days of memory to keep so code every single day even if you can give it five minutes but be consistent with it don't break your consistency and once you start being consistent you don't have to remember a lot of stuff also whatever you learn or whatever you build share it on linkedin share it on twitter join events join discord servers talk to people who are learning or who are already advanced that way that way it's going to open your mind more and you're going to explore more and you are eventually going to learn more from them as well and just show off your work whatever you do show it off as much as you can as more and more people are going to acknowledge what you do and will come a complete circle where people are going to ask you how did you learn this that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you have any other questions or doubts or any video requests please let me know in the comments below i'll be happy to reply you with the answer see you later